What's up all Power Addicts crew? Today's video, we're exploring a topic that's very popular in the Jeep forums and up in the uh, Facebook groups. It's about seating. Now, if you guys refer back uh, several videos back, I put Pontiac Sunfire seats in this thing right here. Absolutely love them. Those seats are awesome. Um, I gotta say that really slow because if I say Sunfire seats really fast, I keep wanting to say Sunflower seats for whatever crazy reason. Anyway, Sunfire seats and I like them. Anyway, I pulled those seats out today to put in a seat that's very popular question. Ford Ranger seats, the bench. They will fit. Little slight modification, not hard at all. They're not direct bolting like the Sunfire seats, but it takes very little modifications to make them work. So, if this is the first time you guys hit Power Action YouTube channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I do Jeep videos, car videos, motorcycle videos, uh, tool videos, you, paracord videos even. So be sure to hit that subscribe button, all right? Now, well, let's show you guys how to put those seats in. Now here's our Ford Ranger bench seat that we're gonna be using. They're going in that for temporarily. The reason I said temporarily, the things are actually pretty nasty. If it wasn't for the fact I got them for free, I probably wouldn't even go through this trouble. I wouldn't even have them, to be honest with you. But, you know, if I was gonna pay for a set, I want a better shape because these seats are kinda of nasty. Split right there. Got some crap right there that's not coming out. But they're good enough to make a video to show you guys that you can cram Ford Ranger uh, bucket seat, bench seats, and a YJ. See that black strap right there? It's not coming off. I mean, they're good for something, I guess. But as soon as I get this video shot, I'm putting my other seats back in and probably trash those. But anyway. Putting these Ford Ranger bench seats in, the first thing we need to do is get those tracks off the bottom of this. So let's get to work. Got 10 millimeter here, 10 millimeter there. Get those two out first. Now get to your back bolts here. You've got to pull this lever and take your other hand and pull, slide down the slides right here. Obviously I'm holding the camera with the other hand or I'd show you that, but yeah, no. Pull this, then take your other hand, push that down. Then once you remove all the bolts, that's what you've got left. Right here's where your bolt holes were. I know you got three positions back here, but this is where they were screwed in at. There and there. Now let's get the passenger side seat. Here you are on the passenger side seat, same scenario. 10 millimeter right here, you'll pull the little lever, pull your slides down, the other one's back in behind that. And there you go, same scenario. Screws there, bolt there, and this position here, this position here somebody's gonna ask hey can we use those bolt holes right there no because they're not threaded that's why now if you want to tap them sure go for it but we'll find out when we get to yj parts slides put them up here and see how they fit but they line up with one of those that would be an option so let's get the yj seats out and look and see what we got now if you guys ever missed the video here's the seats i've got in my jeep currently they come up a pontiac Sunfire, I think it's called. I don't know. I'll put a link up in the corner there, one of those corners it pops up in. And uh, down below in the description, below the videos, as to the video where I installed those. I can tell you right now, if you look at how these seats are made, you got the, you know, padding going on here. These seats are going to be much more comfortable than the Ranger seats, but of course they're buckets and not bench, so it's really a preference as to what you're looking for. These seats are here clean, they're in really good shape. So what's gonna happen is, I'm just making a video for you guys. I'm gonna put the bench seat in here to show you guys, look, it can be done. And this is how to do it. And then those seats are going right back in. Uh, what am I gonna do with the bench seats? Probably trash them, because they are nasty. So, how do I get these seats out of here? Right here, here. We back up in the envelope. Okay, get the camera angle, there we go. Right there and right there now this right here you gotta get it from the bottom of the jeep but the ones you see up here are 9 16 but even that one there you gotta get it from the bottom of the jeep it's a 9 16 as well so you know what let's go under the jeep and i'll show you what's that and under we go right there and so here's the back key transfer case here's your speed sensor blah 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 Go right there beside the body brace right here. That is for that seat. 
sure you gotta take it out. And this is 9 16 as well. And you can see right there, well, sorry, no, right here. It's ahead of the bowl where the other ones are popping through and so on and so on. Anyway, 9 16 While I'm under here, that one's first. Oops, I goofed. That one you gotta get it from the bottom as well. And it's just follow it down. Like you're right here on this lake here. Boom, boom, boom. It's right up underneath there. I've got a regular bolt for that one. Because I goofed the other one up right there. All right, get it out. Now for your YJ seats, when, once you get them out, you'll push this lever right here. Take your slides, put them this way, push it this way, knock all this this way so you can get to your back bolts. Now you see I've got regular standard hex bolts here because of my Pontiac seats. With your Jeep, if you still got the factory YJ, you're gonna have, surprise, surprise, you're gonna have torques. And uh, so, yeah, good luck with that. If you guys refer back to the video whenever I swapped, took out my YJ seats and put these seats, the Pontiac seats in, you'll see that I had a heck of a time getting those bolts out. And I ended up drilling them out, to be honest with you. And I trashed the YJ seats. But for me, all I gotta do is to give me a socket, take those out. But for you, if you still got your factory YJ seats, get your torque bit out and take them out. And if you wanna refer to what size, like I said, go back to the other video, cause I don't remember. And yeah, you'll see how it works on those. Look, I killed my first mosquito for the year. Yay! Nasty little blood sucker. Anyway, take a seat and it almost gets you. What you want to do is get to the front bolts, you push this lever down, slide that up, and there's your bolts there. Watch this, it doesn't fall down. Ah, got it. I was fast enough. All right, get those two bolts out right there, and hopefully, with your YJs, that's not gonna be too bad. Come here, Skeeter. Ah, number two for the year. And one thing I'm gonna forewarn you about, this little lever right here is only held in by these little pins sticking out right here. So once you get one side of your slides off, this lever is gonna be falling free. Not a big deal, but whenever you go to put it back on, and sometimes it can be a little bit of a pain in the tail to stay in place while you bolt everything up. Most of the time it's not, but just give you a forewarning, I have had it be a little bit cranky on me. Just giving you a heads up. Got this side ready to come off, and here's what, I'm, what I mean. See, this just kind of sits off those pins right here and right there. Now... Get this one off. Ta-da! All done. Now, for the moment of truth, let's go to the Ford seats. Get up here. Get you in the center. Now, now I was reading some. I was reading some of the questions that's on the Facebook groups and forums and stuff like that, that everybody's curious about what holds this intersection. Is there a frame that supports it from the floor? No, there's not. Here's your driver's side seat. Your framework for your center section is going back inside the driver's side seat. So there's nothing here holding anything up from here to the floor. It's all affixed to the uh, framework here. Okay, now they've got that straight. Let's see how far off we're gonna be. Take a put your front one in. I hear the motorcycle, and I would like to have mine out right now. Oh, get my ratchet. I don't want it tight right now because I want to be able to slide this down. Okay, now check this out. There's your back bolt hole. So daggone close, it ain't even funny. So what we gotta do, all we gotta do 
Just make that hole right there. Just a smidge of bigger coming back this way. You don't have to drill, nothing really. I mean, just get you a, if you got a round tail file, a round file, cut it back this way, or get you a drill and a drill bit and just kind of rock it back and forth and water this right here out and push that hole down this way and that will bolt right in. That is so sweet. All right, I'm gonna see what I got to modify this. Probably pull out the drill, but if I got a file, I'm gonna go that route. What I'm going to end up doing, I'm just going to give me a bigger drill bit. This is a half inch bit, which will give me plenty of room for these screws right here to go in through. Now, as you mentioned, as I told you earlier, I'm going to put my other seats back in. But it has a good flared washered head on it to show here, so this half inch size hole here it isn't really going to be a big issue. If it is, I'll put a washer on it. And be, no, looking at my bolt head here, and I'll be fine. So... I'm gonna take and drill that out with a half inch bit, which should give me enough clearance to put my hole in. Now, if you're doing something crazy like I'm doing here, you may end up drilling through your seat, just be careful. what I got. Sweet, 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 sweet. Play it over. Look at yonder. And it falls down inside there. Dang it. Well, that ain't good. And I gotta get it out of there. Uh, let's hope I don't drop it back in there again. Spider! Yeah! Okay, don't tighten it up quite yet because you got to be able to line this one up. Up. You ain't gotta get crazy tight with it. Now we gotta push the seat back up to get to the front bolt. Now go over to the other side. Go ahead and put this bolt in. Remember, don't tighten it all the way up because now we got to pull this down to get that back bolt. Roll this over. lever in place, throw this over into that, push it down, slide this down. And let's see what we got. This one right here may actually go. I think this one will go. The only thing I'm concerned with is that bolt up here will line up. And if it doesn't, just do like I did on the other side, just you know, make your hole a little bigger. This is a bit loose, but what do you do? What do you do? That's easy. Take it out. Spread his rascal open like I show here a little bit. Put that in place. Rock this out. 
allow the pins to come into place. Right there, right there, and we're good. Get this top bolt started. Got that one tight. Push the lever, slide that up. Tighten this one up. And that seat is ready to install. Now to get the passenger side seat out. One, two. Uh, so I can see them. I'm using the viewfinder here. Three, four. Get those bolts out. Got the passenger side seat out here. And here's what we gotta do. Get that bolt out there and get that bolt out there. You know, you have to take and push this lever like we did on the driver's side. Push that lever, push it forward, push it back, whatever you gotta do to get to your bolts here and here. And yes, people, somebody's gonna say my bolts don't look like that. You're right, because remember what I told you, those are Pontiac seats. My YJ seats are in YJ heaven now, or wherever the heck they're at. So nonetheless, get the bolts out. I stuck this bolt out right here, and that's kind of the framework is in my way, and I moved this right here back. I'm like, hey, wait a minute, I need to show you guys that. Right here, your bolt is gonna be kind of in the way of getting, those frames gonna be in the way of getting the bolt out. Push down your lever here, push it into the seat. Pull that up, it opens this wide open. Now you can get to it, see? Now we gotta get to the back ones. And just like the driver's side seat, push down that lever. Ta-da, there they are. And they're pretty easy, cause you know you push this out of the way and you got wide open shot on these. And they're loose. Over to the Ford seat. Come on over here. Let me make sure you ain't looking at the back of my head. All right, we're gonna get lucky on this wood. Okay, so I want my front holes first. So I push my lever in here, and I push my slides, which exposes my front uh, front holes. All right, flip this rack. Go back over. Get the bolts. Let's right here. See if you can see it. Nope, you can't see it. I've got this resting on my knee to kind of hold it in place while I line up my bolt holes. And the forward seats I'm using 10 millimeter. If I didn't mention it earlier. Yes, I found my 10 millimeter. Get my ratchet. Remember, you don't want them tight because we got to slide that down and see what's going on for the back side. All right, let this come down, let it line up. Okay, I see something that's a little bit quirky already. Let me show you. On the passenger side seat, it's not gonna line up. But the way the seat's made, it's not gonna hurt if you grab hold of it here and pull it to the side. If I can do it without get my finger off in the camera. I'm grabbing the frame right there and pulling it to, to my left, which I can make the bolt hole line up. So that's what I'm gonna do, but I can't do that and hold the camera both. Then we'll slide this down and see what our back holes look like. Again, taking a half inch bit, making a hole a little bit bigger. Same scenario going on over here. But as I do it now, when I put my half inch bit, I'm gonna try to favor pushing the hole toward the front of the seat track. That'll more elongate the hole down this way a little bit. Now, obviously I can't, do it now because I can move this right here around over here and drill the hole which you can't do that with a pastor because you got all this mechanism holding it together taking the frame off drill those holes now call it resourceful or call it lazy I really don't care which but I stuck a socket under that way it gives me clearance between the frame and the slides here I can drill that and it'll be just fine I don't have to take all this jazz off again Ta-da! we are lined up Now 
snag it up good get over and get that side now side right here again we got to spread that frame so there's a bit of a trick to it we're gonna try okay let's give this for a test run now take the pry bar get in here push this over hold it both started pry bar out of the way hopefully So we're tightening this side up. Okay. Now remember, we haven't tightened up our front one. So simply do like I told you on the driver's seat. Push that lever down at the bottom. Other way. Push that lever right there. Then move the track assembly up. Then you can get to the front ones. Now one very important tip, put your passenger side seat back in your Jeep first. Passenger side first. Why? Because you got to get to these two bolts right here. Here and here to go through your tub. Well, if you put your driver's side seat in first, the center partition, the center uh, bench piece is going to be hanging over top of those bolts. Can you still get to them? Oh, yeah, obviously you can. But is it more difficult? Obviously it is. So. Just to save yourself a little bit of a headache and a little fuss and a cussing, put your passenger side seat in first. And, well, we showed you how to take them out. You can put them back in. You can do it! Okay, we've got the passenger side already bolted down. Put the driver's side in. That was fun and interesting. Put that big rascal through all that, especially with the hard top on. Uh, feed your seat belts up through here, and you're good to go on that. Now, it looks like it's ridiculously tall right now because if you look right there, the bolt is not through the floor. So, I'm about to set that down, but I can tell you already before I even get these things bolted down, they're a lot thicker than the YJC. So, uh, it's going to push you upward. And if you're extremely tall, you may be bumping your head. So, I'm going to go ahead and get that side bolted down and see what's up. Four Ranger seats will fit in the YJ with a little bit of modifications, but this particular set right here are super thick right here. Look at this. Yeah. Let me hop up in there and see how much boost I get out of that. So here you go. Here's my leg. Ah, stuff it up underneath there. Now if you got two wheels, I guess that's okay. Yeah, let's see. I'm good on the pedals. I'm just you know, it ain't many times in my life I feel like I'm tall, but right now I feel like I'm tall because I'm sitting way up here. So, yeah. I guess the seats that you pull is going to you know what year you pull them out of is going to determine you know, their thickness and stuff. So, that's one thing you definitely want to check out. Look how nasty these rascals are. They're coming back out next weekend. There's your center console that everybody wants. You got your bench coming across there. Now, I'm using the YJ seat belts here. If you want to keep if you want a center seat belt, just be sure whenever you pull the seats out of the Ranger to get those seat belts out. Uh, I didn't pull these seats out. This came out of a truck that my dad and I stripped out. So he knew I was looking for a set to make a video off of. So he pulled them out for me and didn't get the seat belts. But certain year Rangers, the seat belts are bolted to the seats. Certain years are bolted to the floor tub. So I'm not 100% sure, like I said, he already had these pulled out for me. Go to the other side. And you see it leans back, it barely clears your roll bar. Pull the lever, they lay back. And it'll still flip forward, no problem, as you guys see whenever it was uh, doing the install. But I'll tell you what, I'll grab it and flip it forward real quick. Be right back. And there you go, flip forward. So your occupants have, if, you got a, if you're running the back seat, I've got my back seat out at the moment, obviously. But uh, yes, yeah, so and then you and your backseat occupants have access to get back there. And one thing I want to note, where we spread that frame out right there to make it hit the center lines of the seats, it is a little harder to flip that seat forward. Okay, bear that in mind. So once you pull it forward back a few times, it'll probably loosen up. But the first couple times, it's tight. And you see right there, like some people mentioned, what holds up the middle? Right there, nothing. It just floats, hangs the frame off the driver's side seat. Now, as you can see, it reclines back. It clears the roll bar just fine. That one reclines back as well. Totally functional. Now, whenever you go to search for your seats, just be sure to check on this thickness right here. 
The what I've heard, and I don't know this for sure, and I haven't checked, is that if you pull them from like a, this came from a standard cab Ranger. If you get the extended cab Rangers, no little extended back end Rangers, those have, uh, they're supposed to have a thinner seat, okay? Maybe you want to check on that. So carry around a little tape measure in the junkyard. A little skunk. Measure, because these right here are about approximately seven and a half inches thick from the bottom of this, top of this, approximately seven and a half inches. And there you go, driver's side's all reclined back. So if you just somewhere out camping or whatever and you don't you're not sleeping in a tent, you can recline back and take you a nap, I reckon. Water floats your boat. Just showing you that it reclines, it clears the roll bar. And you seen how much leg clearance I had there. So again, that's just one of those things you want to check whenever you can pull a set out of a scrapyard somewhere. Check that thickness, because if you can't afford any height by hitting your head up here. You don't want to do this mod because these are pretty daggone thick. So there you go. I went through all this for the past hour and a half to cram these things in here to give you guys a video. And next weekend, I'm pulling them right back out and trashing them. Cool. Cool. It's been about two weeks since I put these seats in. And here's what my final analysis for this whole thing is. I like having bench seats. Hands down, I love having bench seats. I will have another set of bench seats, just not this set. And here's why. As I mentioned earlier, the thickness here from this, where it bolts on to here, is so thick. And I showed you guys where I was having to squeeze my legs underneath the steering wheel. I just can't adjust it to the, for that for one thing. And for two, you know, I ain't a bit, it's not that big a deal with my head being so high because I'm not that tall to begin with. But not being that tall is a handicap for me being this high reaching the pedals. Okay, y'all can laugh. Go for it. I seriously have to take my toes and push the clutch in. I'm 5'6", five, 5'7", five, something like that. So whenever I push the clutch in, I'm having to almost like take my toe and push it to make sure it disengages further enough. So, that's you know, one of the downsides. Um, another thing I want in a uh, bench seat, you know, you got your little drop down centerpiece right here, which is handy. I like it because when I'm driving down the road, I'm shifting gears. And for those of you who I know, the shifter clears fine. And I've actually, this is not, I have an AX15 five-speed transmission in it. This stock here is out of an S10, out of a T5 S10. When I got the Jeep, I had nothing but a piece of pipe sticking out of the floor that I used for a shifter. So, no, it's kind of what... I wonder that piece of pipe. Oh, you know those uh, jack handles that you see in the back of some cars that has the hollow tube, has one end of it flattened out? That's what was sticking on the end of this for a shifter when I first got the Jeep. Had a T5 shifter when my dad did um, that came out of an S10. I cut it, welded it, fabricated into this because I didn't have the original Jeep stock, so I just welded in a, a T5 shifter. But it still has its factory AX15 base bolted to the transmission, for those of you who may wonder. So what that does, the shifters actually sets back further than the Jeep one does. And it still clears everything here just fine. Reverse all your back side gears, clear the seat just fine. Let me hop up in here, I'll show you. And here's what I'm talking about, squeezing my leg underneath the steering wheel. And I'm pushing on the clutch, I'm having to like, I'm using my toe to finish out pushing the clutch. So second gear, third gear, Fourth gear, fifth gear, reverse. And it looks not hitting. I mean, I can pull it back and make it touch, but it's not hitting it. And what I like, I kind of see my elbows kind of resting on the. Try to see what the viewfinder sees. Ha oh, We got my elbow resting right here. And I was able to just kind of wood and wood and wood and just kind of go through the gears just fine. I like having that center console here. I like that a lot. Now, the condition of the seats, of course, you see a tear here. Not that big a deal because the Jeep obviously is not a show rig anyway, so not a big deal. But the downside of it is these things smell like a wet dog done took a dump. They stink. They got to go. I'm not dealing with stink. I can deal with dirty because, like I said, it's not a show rig. I've hauled firewood in the back of it. I use it like a truck, whatever. The smells, hey, no, just no. Now, the op one option is... I could cut these and shorten it 
but I'm not going to do that. I, what I've read, and I don't know for sure, is that the seats that come out of uh, extended cab rangers are not as thick. So next time I do junkyard hopping, I'm going to take my tape measure with me, and I'm going to start measuring the thickness of seats from the mounting surface here to here. And if I can take, get like inch and a half, two inches less depth from the seat pad here, then I'm good. I'll try to pull them out of a Ranger so they make some pretty much a direct bolt in, but hey, I got fabrication skills. I don't care what they come out of. But what you'll have to watch is, let me go get a tape measure, I'll be right back. When I got my tape measures, I'll show you what I'm talking about. What we gotta watch is the overall width of the seat because, you know, Jeep tubs are a little bit on the narrow side. So, I'm looking at four feet from surface of seat the surface of the seat over there now then you got to accommodate your you know you uh metal and levers and also right here so i mean you're only looking about four feet three inches total width so that's one thing you want to keep it keep in mind when you're junkyard hopping and you don't pull them out of a ranger but you pull them out of something else is your overall width because you got you know you can't come out too wide for a couple of different reasons one you know you're afraid that you know when you close your door you hit the seat and it won't close but think about something if your overall width is wider coming out this way your center line of your seat where you're putting your tush is also going to go wider which could put you off center from sitting in the steering wheel you'll be sitting to the right or to the left if you go if you're going to the right that means your seats are too narrow if you end up going to the left your seats are wider so four inches from here i'm sorry four feet from here to the other side and if you want to accommodate this for overall width of your doors or whatever the case may be, about four feet, three inches or so. Four foot four, roughly, whatever. So keep that in mind. Now, if you even want to, let's see. Measures center of the seat there to center of the seat over here. You're looking at about 29 inches. Again, what that's doing is placing your passenger's proper location of the dash here. But it's more, more importantly, it's putting you as the driver center line of the steering wheel because you don't want to be sitting to the right or to the left of it. So that's one of the things you got to watch when you're doing junkyard seats. These Ranger seats were a super easy bolt in. And I'm really disappointed for one that they're too thick. Uh, for another, they smell like a wet dog done took a dump. So yeah, they got to go. I will have another set, but what, since I'm going to be shopping again, I want my center console to come out a little bit further cup holders flip it up that way i have storage compartment st stuff in there that's something i really want in my next set but like i said these right here were freebies uh dad and i was stripping out a truck a ford ranger and he pulled these seats out because he knew i wanted to try them out in this so there you go there's i can't think of anything else i can tell you guys shifter clear is fine i showed you guys how to lean forward you can toss the whole thing forward the bracketry works okay your seat risers bolts in uh trying to see if i forget anything no oh, there you go all right i'm putting other seats back in now that i've got my pontiac sunfire seats back in i'm thinking hmm since i like bucket seats so much maybe build me a console i've got a very nice ammo can in the shop that could be a future video what do you think and I hope y'all learned a little something from that video. If you did, hit me with a thumbs up now. Subscribe if you haven't. Leave me some cool comments down below. Now, I showed you guys that it was pretty easy to swap them out. That the uh, risers and the slides and everything swapped out pretty easily. Little, little modifications. And I've read some places in the forums and Facebook groups where people have drilled extra holes and this and that. Maybe it's because, you know, different year seats or different year uh, seat risers in the Jeeps. Because one thing that I've been told, whenever I put the um, Pontiac Sunbird, it's golly, Pontiac Sunfire seats in this thing, uh, they were a direct bolt. They were straight direct bolt. This is a 91 model right here. Now, some people who had the 93s, 94s, 95s, or something like that, apparently the risers are a little bit different because they had it wasn't a direct bolt. They had to drill some holes. So... With that being said, maybe with the Ford Rangers, this these were so close that I just had to modify the hole a little bit. But if you got if your risers, if your Jeep is like a I don't know 93, 94 above, your risers may be a little bit different, and you may have to drill a hole or two. Not a big deal. It's still super easy. So, like I said, if you guys enjoyed uh, enjoyed this video, got a little learning from it. 
Give me a thumbs up. Yeah, I said little learnings. I went country on you. Also, subscribe if you haven't. Leave me some cool comments down below. Now, if you guys have done this um, Ford Ranger swap and you had good luck out of it as far as the seat height worked out well for you, put down in the comments what year Ranger that you got them from, if you remember. Like, no, these right here, I have no idea. I don't remember what I, I just snatched them. And some other miscellaneous parts I got off of it. So, leave it down in the comments if you've done this particular swap and with success. And if you remember the year Ranger you pulled it up, put it down there because that may even help me and help other people who read, who uh, watch the video and read the comments. Cool. Also, check out www.poweraddicts.com. Now I have a website that is going along with the YouTube channel. This website is going to have various different articles about whatever you know, we come up with. Also, it's going to... If you look up top, it's going to say knowledge base. If you click on that knowledge base link up top, it's going to take you to an area inside the site to where I am putting videos, links to the videos on YouTube. You drill down, you say, okay, uh, one of the little drop downs is going to be like engine internal. You click on it. This shows you how to do a compression check or engine external. And it shows you how to you know, do sensors or whatever the case may be. But what it does, it organizes all these videos I have to where it's much easier for you guys to find if you're having a particular issue with a you know, crankshaft position sensor, you can go in there and find the video much quicker than using the search function that's built with inside YouTube. Much faster, much easier. Now, all my videos are not attached yet, so just keep checking by, if you don't, checking in. If you don't see what you're looking for, keep checking in, and I'll, I mean, I'm adding them as, as, add as fast as I can, because I still work a full-time job and doing YouTube as well, okay? Also, check out the store. I got t-shirts available. I got cups available. I got much, of, lots of other cool stuff that's going to be added here really soon. Cool? All right, everybody check out the t-shirts. Check out the cups. They're big rascals. They're like 14, 15 ounce cups. They're big rascals. They're really cool. So go by and check them out. Well, all right, everyone. I really appreciate you hanging out with me. Peace out. Later, y'all.